Well, today we're going to continue on um, with fasting and teaching on that, and uh, and uh, <laughs> of course, my wife's texting me while I'm preaching. I was like, okay, I won't look. All right, I'm just not going to look. Um, why why teach on fasting? Why look at fasting? And 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 I think there's um, some really good reasons that possibly we might not understand, especially if we're young in the Lord. And one of the things is this, your faith increases when you, when you fast. And the reason why your faith increases is faith is of the heart. And when you function from your heart, your spirit, you have an ability to believe God, his word, apply it more so than when your flesh is in dominance, okay? I mean, you know, the, the, the journals we've been going through, we, we, so far we've gone through love, joy, and peace. And, and if you haven't been going through it, just grab one. You can just, just go through it. It's a great study. It's a great practice. You know, we love, joy, and peace. And these are the fruit of the Spirit. When you, do, when you learn to be dominated by the fruit of the Spirit, amen, what are you doing? You're not being dominated by your flesh. Your, your, your flesh, when, when somebody does something wrong, doesn't want to act in love, all right. When situations don't go right, you don't want to act in joy. Come on. When, th when things are just going terrible, you don't have peace. But inside of you is, are all those things. You can yield to those things and then deal with the situation from a perspective of love, joy, and peace. All right. But to do that, you have to know how to connect with the inner person. You have to learn to connect to your spirit and be dominated from there. And faith uh, is increased as we fast, as we learn to be dominated from our spirit. And so why do we fast? One, because you're greater on the inside than you are on the outside. You've been born again, filled with the spirit of God. Inside your spirit, you are greater than you are in your own just cognitive abilities or in your emotional direction. You're greater. Now, how do I develop these things? You've got to understand, not only are you greater and you're smarter there, you are stronger there. Now, the more we develop our mind with this understanding and we study things, we study anything. You study science. You study all kinds of different things. It doesn't matter. We're studying what God truly made. And if I understand that I'm studying what God truly made, the more I develop my mind, the more I actually, by the Spirit, have the ability to know what the Spirit's saying and to grow in those things. Okay, to grow in any given area. There's many scientists, the inventors, that they kind of knew this. Some of them knew it because they were Christians. Some of them just discovered that when they will take, they would take naps and they would just kind of close their mind down as they're meditating on things. Then they would wake up with the answer. They couldn't figure out why, but they would wake up with the answer of the thing that they were trying to discover and things like this. I believe what happened is their spirit, because God created their spirit, their spirit understands things of this world and understands things that our mind hasn't caught up to yet. And through that being connected there, things come together. It's amazing. We will be better in every realm if we learn to be dominated by the spirit. Okay. With that, Faith is a response to whatever the Spirit is initiating, okay? Faith is, comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. The Word of God is written by the Spirit of God. There's also a prophetic word that goes forth, and when we respond to those things, faith is there and able then to produce whatever the kingdom is pronouncing. Somebody in our church uh, had smoked for years and couldn't quit, wasn't quitting, um, uh, and, you know, uh, and, and one day there was a word, I think Jonathan was preaching and I, I don't know exactly how, well, I wish Bill was in the room, but he's, he's doing something right now. But uh, I think Jonathan, you said, if somebody will just believe that, you know, if you'll give it to God, I think that's what it was. I don't know. You said something on those. Uh, if you'll just give this to God, he'll take it and you'll be free, whatever. You know what he did? He came up and he took that as a word from God and says, okay, I give smoking to God. He quit that day. Oh, yeah, why? Because Jonathan felt an unction from the Holy Spirit, okay? How would he know that? I mean, it wasn't something that, that Jonathan, trust me, he's not that smart. He's, he, he just, you know, I know the guy, okay? What happened was, is he heard from the Spirit and he decided, I'm going to speak this forth. And by the Spirit, then somebody heard that being Bill, and, and Bill heard that and said, all right, I'll do that. 
And he quit that day. Then a couple of days later, he's hacking, he's doing all these things, and he comes up to me and he goes, Man, you know, I quit smoking, but man, I got all this. I don't want, I don't want to be dealing with this. I go, you don't have to deal with that. I, I just I said, if you want, we can agree right now, and you won't have any symptoms. I go, God delivered you. Why go through the symptoms? He looked at me and goes, All right, deal. We agreed that day, never coughed, never hacked up, you know, stopped having all those symptoms. Why? What is it? Did, 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 did God love Bill more than anybody else? No, what happened is, is somehow at that time, Bill was able to hear something from the spirit, right? And then grab onto it. Okay. I don't know if it's con consequence that, that, that just a few weeks late, prior to that he was fasting. <laughs> I don't know. But at that point he was able to grab onto it as a word from God yielded to it. And that's what faith is. I'm going to yield to this. And he received. Okay. It's very simple. Why are we fasting? Why are we doing things? I'm greater on the inside than I'm on the outside. There's, there's faith that God wants to do. And I'm going to go into more of this in just a second. And then we'll go into the teaching and I may do some rapid fire preaching. Okay. Now, Wednesday, there was prayer for this service. Okay. And, uh, and just interesting. And, and so there's some things that in prayer, people that were praying got these things that said, we believe that God wants to do something with these symptoms, okay? And so if this is you, as Bill just said, I'll take that, I'll give that to God, or I'll receive this, just receive it, okay? Uh, gallbladder, okay? Somebody's dealing with gallbladder problems, just receive it. Digestive issues, just, you know, I mean, I don't know what that might mean, but who cares? Uh, repetitive sickness, man, you got chronic sickness, Hey, why not, why not stop it today? Sinus problem, ear popping, ear ringing, neck pain, infection, swollen lymph nodes, okay? Uh, tumors being uh, shrinking, being healed. Awesome. Okay, so what do I got to do? Some of the spirit, do I have to? Uh, all right, Lord, thank you. That was called out. That's me. I receive. Thank you. All right. That, you know, I don't know how to explain it any other way. And as we learn to receive from God, great things happen. Do you understand there are many forces against the will of God in your life? There's a real devil coming against you. There's a real world. This world has the law of degeneration about it. The whole, the whole world does. It's getting old. Do you understand this thing's going to perish? God's going to remake it. You get a new car. How long is it new? Not very long, okay? They, they wear out. I don't care how long you take care of it, how well you take care of them, you know what I mean? Eventually it's going to wear out. Why? Because decay, degeneration. How many of you know the day you were born, there was a number of days, okay? You know, it's kind of fun because you see growth in the body and development, you know, in all kinds of different ways, you know what I mean? And then you get to like be my age and you're thinking, okay, I, I, I'm like going towards the end now. I'm, go, I'm going like, all right, well, how am I going to pass this thing out? How are we going to like, you know, whatever, you know what I'm saying? And you start thinking, I want to be super effective in these last days. Why? Because I know, I know very doubtful I'll be around 50 years. Okay, I'd be 100, you know, six. I don't even know if I want to be that old, okay? 20 years, I wouldn't be ripped off. The average life expectancy of a pastor is only 65, 55 to 65. Not ripped off at all, right? Degeneration. There's all these forces against you. But what does God's word say? And God's word comes against all these things, the forces of Satan, the forces of this world, the forces of, you know, whatever. You're not going to live forever, but you know what I'm saying, because God's word says you won't. But you know what I mean? There's all these forces against you. How do I enforce the kingdom of God? I've got to know what his word says. And then I start applying the word. And what it is, is now I, with the kingdom, I'm going against the forces that are trying to kill me and to steal from me. Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And by faith, I am Pressing against something. There's always going to be a force against the prosperity, the blessing, the intimacy with God, all these things that Satan wants to stop that. And he'll do it through all kinds of things. He'll even disguise it as religion to stop you from having the life of God. And you know what? You and I need to take the word and apply it and put the force against it. There will never be 
a day when the forces of hell aren't pressing against you, you just get stronger. And, you, and it's almost like, and then this is what James says, you'll get to the point where I count it all joy. Why? Because this trial is coming against me and I'm going to use faith and it's going to be destroyed and I'm going to get stronger. Oh, come on, somebody. This is good preaching. I don't know if you knew that or not. Amen. So listen to this. Romans 4, 16, it says, Therefore, He's talking about the promises. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be according to grace, that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those of the law, but also to the, uh, those who are of faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be according to grace. God wants to do all things by faith so that grace is the thing that empowers you to and manifest the kingdom of God. God doesn't want it to be in your effort. He wants it to be by his grace. So then I take my effort to enter into faith. I take the fight, the good fight of faith. And when I do that, I enter into grace and then I can come against the things that are coming against me in life. One of the ways that I do that is I connect to heaven through fasting. I become more spiritually aware and, and, and uh, less symptom aware, less temptation aware, less whatever aware of this world. We talked about fasting was a part of the early church. It was a regular part of the early church, you know, uh, and we talked about what fasting is. And um, we talked about praying the prayers of Ephesians, the prayer of Ephesians 1, 17 through 21, 22, praying that over each other, praying that you know, the eyes of understanding would be enlightened, that we might know the hope of his calling. What are the riches of his glory, of his inheritance in the saints? What is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe? I mean, you know, a lot of times people are going, where is God? Rather than going, his power is towards me. You see, if your faith is where is God, guess what? Where is God? Because that's what you believe. But if you believe, I don't care what I feel like, I don't care what's going on, the power of God is towards me, then your faith is in that. You're going to start to experience the power of God in your life. What you believe is where you are. What you believe is where you are going. Your life today is the sum total of the things that you believe. Come on. All right. We looked at Matthew, build your house, your life upon the rock, the, hearing the saints of him, doing what he said. One of the things that God said in Matthew 6, we looked at this, it says, when you pray, when you give, when you fast, he says, he'll reward you openly. I believe we went over all that. So today, what, you know, we took that, what the types of fast. I don't know if we went over that. We're going to start there right now. You ready? There's a supernatural fast. I doubt that anybody in this church is ever going to go on one of these. I've never known anyone that has done, I mean, I've known people that have done this, but I doubt it was led by the Spirit. A supernatural fast, have, I don't know anybody that's ever done a supernatural fast. They went without food and water for 40 days. Okay? Uh, Moses, he was on the mountain, 40 days. I, you know, I, I don't know. Maybe God gave him something. You know what I mean? You know, we see Elijah, 40 days. We see Jesus, 40 days. You cannot do that without a supernatural sus sustaining of life. You can't live without water. You can't live without food. But you can live without food that long. It depends how much storage you have before. You know, <laughs> you, 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 you can't live without water. You know what I'm saying? You can't, you can't do it. It's an impossibility. So there's a supernatural fast. Can I just share this with you? If you think God's telling you to do a supernatural fast, I'm going to say probably not. Okay? You get to a real high spiritual level, a maturity level. I'm talking like way above me and way above anybody else I know. Okay, maybe he'll lead you to do that, but it's going to be, you're going to know the voice of the Lord so well that there's not a question about it. And guess what? You'll come out better than when you went in. The funny thing is, is all the people I know that have tried this have been immature Christians who really love God, but they just don't know how to hear the spirit of God yet. And they have such a desire for God that they just want to do this. And they think that they're hearing God to say this and then they go do it, but it really wasn't God. Then they fall on their face and they injure their faith. Sometimes we try to believe God for things that we don't really have the faith for because we really want it to be. Then we injure our faith. How do I know what I can truly believe for? 
Matthew, Mark, Mark 16, Mark 11 is, is, is my guide for that. And he says, whenever you stand praying, if, believe that you receive it before you pray and then you'll have it. And I ask myself, can I pray right now and know that this thing is done? That this thing is over? My son was in a coma. He had spinal meningitis. They gave us no hope, the stuff like this. I, I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew. I prayed, I understood. I got the scripture. I did whatever. I said, Lord, can I pray and this be done? And I, I was, I, I investigated my, I said, yes. Bam, I had it. I had it. He's still on life support, but I had it. Because I prayed. I knew I received. I had friends come up. I've told you the story many times. I'm going to keep repeating stories so that it gets burned into your brain because you're going to come up to things. You know what I mean? And as I had a friend say, hey, I'm going to come up and pray. We're going to do warfare. So I said, don't. I already got it. Just take me out to eat. I'm hungry. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how to explain it, but I knew, I knew, I knew that when I prayed, it was over. It was a done deal. And he came out of it. Doctors were surprised. Nurses were surprised. One nurse got born again. Three nurses, three nurses came into that room and said, why do we all like to be in here? What is it that we're experiencing when we come in here? You tell me what this is. And we go, we can tell you. You might not like it, but we can tell you. You're experiencing the peace and the anointing of God working on my son. And they just said, we love being in here. Can we have that kind of life? I think we have moments of that kind of life. And I think if we'll continue and press on, it's not easy, but if we'll continue and press on, there's more and more and more of that that just is residue in our life all the time. Does that make sense? Can you tell when you're in the presence of a believer? Man, I tell you what, when we lived in Russia, there was not a lot of believers and stuff like this. I'd be walking down the street and somebody would walk by me and I'd go, they're a believer. And I would stop them and I'd say, are you a believer in Jesus Christ? Because I mean, if they weren't, I was going to try to, you know, persuade them that this is a good deal. <laughs> Almost to the time they were a believer, just by, I felt something. Why? Because they had the same thing I had. And when you're, oh, never mind. Okay, I'm just, okay, for supernatural fast, okay. There's a total fast, which means that you don't do any food or strong drink. You drink water, but you don't eat food. You don't, you, you don't eat food, you don't drink alcohol, you don't do that. You, 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 you fast food, but you drink water, okay. Esther did this for three days. You know the story. She was gonna go to the king. She wasn't called. She needed favor, right? So everybody fasted. She got the favor. God worked great results. Amen. You know what I mean? And there's times when that, you know, uh, where that needs to happen in the great deliverance of people. Paul fasted three days after he met the Lord and he was knocked to the ground and things like this. What happened after that? He received his call. The Lord showed him how many things he would have to suffer for his namesake, that he was calling him to the Gentile, all those types of things after that fast. And, and it's interesting. And his eyes were healed. He could see. Daniel did a fast where we call it a Daniel fast where he didn't eat any pleasant foods for 21 days. He prayed, okay, and, and, and then he didn't eat any pleasant food. He didn't eat any bread, meat, or sugar for, for 21 days, and he just kept worshiping God, and he kept seeking the Lord, and on the 21st day, an angel showed up and says, on the first day that you prayed, I was sent, but the prince of Persia hindered me from coming to you. You see, I think because he continued in prayer, uh, that the angel was able to keep pressing in towards him. Don't give up on the things that you're believing God for. Don't give up when you're praying. And there's times when you need to fast and pray. And understand, this is under the Old Testament. There's things that are different. There are forces that are different now under the New Testament. How much more should you and I be persistent if he was? We have a better covenant and a better promises. Satan has been disarmed. Principalities, they have been made a show of openly. They don't have the, we have the anointing. We have the Holy Spirit inside of us. Amen. We've got the promises made sure through Jesus Christ by faith that it might be according to grace. Amen. And so we have it better than Daniel. Come on, somebody. This is good preaching. I'm just saying. Jehoshaphat called a fast. I like this story. I, you know, I don't have time to go into it, but 2 Chronicles 20, you can read it there. 
And, uh, you know, they're coming, they're, they're, there's, there's great multitude against them, right? And, and they're in fear and they call a fast. And let me just read some of this to you because I think it is so cool. And this is how faith acts, okay? And Jehoshaphat, Jeho- this is in verse 3 if you want to bring it up. I don't know. Whatever. Verse 3, it says, And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judea. Okay? And, you know, you got a multitude against you, an army that's going to crush you and kill you. All right. Yeah, let's, let's fast and pray. <laughs> so Judah gathered together. Uh, so Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord and from all the cities of Judah. They came to seek the Lord. So they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord. And guess what? You know what they did? They put the singers out front. They go out to meet this multitude of army, right? And he says, Worship team, you're going first. Okay, they didn't even, they, you know what they did? They were fasting and praying. You know what they did? They consulted together. Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat's going, let's trust God. And they're going, yeah, yeah. What do we got to lose? Really? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we either trust God, he does something really cool, or we die anyway. I don't know what their conversation was, but nowhere in the story does it say God said, put the singers first. You know what happened? They said, you know what? We're going to trust God. This is how much we're going to trust God. We're going with the singers first. Army in the back, singers first. How many of you know you got to have faith if you're going to be on that worship team? Come on, somebody. Come on. And God wrought a huge victory that they didn't even have to fight. You know, sometimes I think faith is you just need to hang out with the right people and say, you know what, let's just, let's go do something big. Let's just, let's just, let's just do something that's earth shaking. Let's do something that's generation changing. Let's just do it. Why? Because we believe God wants to. What kind of people are you hanging out with? All right, why not? And for all you young people that are really excited, get wise counsel, please, before you go do anything. All right? Yeah. I love you too. We'll guide you. Amen. But we'll release you. Amen. At the same time. It'll be a wonderful thing. Whoo! I remember when I was that age, Pastor Eric and I, and we would do stupid stuff thinking it was God. Oh my gosh. We have stories. Oh my. It, it is hilarious. I'm so glad we did them, but it, it was like, I wish somebody was guiding. All right. Anyway. In Acts 13, the church calls a fast, and then they separate Paul and Barnabas unto the ministry into which they were called. Okay, so, you know, how about before we pray for the next generation to be anointed for ministry, we call a church fast, and we pray together and lay hands on them and get a prophetic word. Come on, you know, those types of things. There's going to be more things like that that we may may end up doing together as a church. Uh, Esther calls a fast, and you know, uh, which is awesome. And, you know, so you see these things where fasts are called together. And I want to, I want to get to something here. Um, receiving direction in, in um, Judges 20, it says, Then all the children of Israel, that is, all the people went up and went to the house of God and wept. And they sat before the Lord and fasted that day until evening. And they offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. I, you know, there's so many things that if you're spiritual enough to handle them, you know, I mean, it's awesome. But when you come to worship the Lord, he's a king. And anytime you come into the presence of a king, it is protocol and it's honoring to bring a gift. How do you honor God? Think about that. What can I bring him? And you look out through the, the, you look out through the Bible and when they would come into the presence of the king, they brought something. Did the king need anything that they were going to bring, really? It was a matter of honor. And the Lord says, if you'll honor me, I'll honor you. 
and they're worshiping God, what did they do? Man, they offered, they brought offerings. They did sacrifices. So, so the, in, there's different, you know, anyway. The children of Israel uh, inquired of the Lord, and the Ark of the Covenant was there. And, you know, anyway, but the, the thing that I want you to know is, is as they did this, shall we go up against them, shall we not? Yes, go up against them. I delivered them into your hand, you know. And it's like, okay. There's times when you fast and you pray and you get direction, you seek God. What do I do? Do I do it now? Do I do it at this time? Do I, you know what I mean? And so getting direction from the, the, the Lord, amen. Uh, Samuel calls the fast and the nation repents and, and God brought a great deliverance. And so there's a time when you call a fast and everybody gets their heart right. The purpose of fasting one is obedience. We looked at this in Matthew 6, 16. Moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites. He didn't say if you fast. He says when you fast. Fasting really should be a part of every believer's life. And, and so if it's not a when, it should be in your life. It should be when I fast. Number two, to accomplish God's will, Acts 13. And they ministered to the Lord and fasted, and the Holy Spirit said, separate me, Barnabas and Paul, into the work in which I have called them. You know, and up until that point, they're just fasting and praying. And then the Holy Spirit says, I've called these two, separate them right now, anoint them, and send them out. To find help in difficult situations, Esther's fast, Jehoshaphat's fast, Samuel's fast. Finding help in difficult times. You're dealing with something, you don't know what to do, you don't know how to handle it, family situation, health problem, just whatever, you're going to find out in Isaiah 58 when I start teaching on that, which I'm really wanting to get to, and that's kind of why I'm going through all this rather fast. You can read all these things, and I'll send you the scripture references, whatever, we'll put it on the website if we need to or whatever, so that we can get to the place where an understanding that in Isaiah 58, it talks about the things that the Lord desires not in only in fasting, but what he wants to do through you fasting, okay? And so we see all these things and we see that God wants a fast. He actually didn't say he wanted to fast. He really, when God says, when you fast, and the word of God says that, it's really a command. If we fear God. You see, I think the fear of God has been lost in the church. What does it mean to fear God? And I'm not talking about a fear where I don't want to be in his presence. It's a fear I don't want to not obey his word because he said this. He said to do this. I fear God because I know we're going to have a dialogue about this sometime. He has been so good to me, I don't want to let him down. Amen. That's the fear of the Lord. I honor him. He's smarter than I am, and I don't care if it makes sense to my head. I'm going to do what he says. That's the fear of the Lord. When I got born again, I, I just, I fell in love with him. Oh my gosh, I went to church demon-possessed. I left free. I couldn't love him anymore. I mean, I was, I was all in, sold out, happy. And the first thing that I didn't understand is why they passed the Kentucky Fried Chicken Bucket. <laughs> and so the guy that brought me to church, I'm going, why, what was that? And he goes, it's a tithe. And I go, that means nothing to me. What, is, what does a tithe mean? You got to understand, I didn't even know the Bible was broken into books. I, hadn't, I was clueless. And he goes, God wants 10% of your income. I go, okay, off my gross or net. And he's looking at me like, are you on drugs? I know, a little while ago I was, but now I'm not. <laughs> and I'll never forget this. And if you're watching, sorry, bro, I'm telling your story, but not, I didn't tell your name and I really doubt you're watching anyway. He goes, I've been serving God for X number of years and I still struggle with that and you're just going to do it? And I go, why wouldn't I? I go, is there anything else God wants? That's the fear of the Lord. I loved him so much. I wasn't afraid to be in his presence. I wanted to be in his presence. But I said, is there anything else he wants? 
And he was freaking out. I go, I don't care. You could tell me right now he wants 50% of my income. He's got it. If you tell me he doesn't want me to drive cars anymore, I'd drive a buggy. <laughs> you you got to understand, I was in a very dangerous place because I fell in love with Jesus. And I didn't know the word. He could have told me anything. And I loved God and I feared him in a good way that I didn't care if I thought it was his will. I'm going to do it. You know what? I live that way today. I just want to do his will. And I'm still figuring some things out, folks, because I found out in my life I was religious about some things and I was bound in some things and I don't even know how it got in there. And the Lord did some radical things in my heart that probably freaked some of you out that how he wanted me to break that religious spirit and to do some things. But you know what? I just want to be free in him. I want to fear him. And you know what? When I thought I was going to die, I think it was one of, the, one of the best times in my life, really. Because I decided I'm going to, whatever is going to glorify him, that's what I want to do. How am I going to live life? I mean, you think about it. If you think you only got two weeks left on this earth, what would you do? And what would you say to people? Or what would you give? Or what would you, you know, why don't we just kind of live that way? Because in reality, you're facing him now. You are facing him right now. How are you living your life? If you wouldn't want him to judge you for the way you're living someday, you're already in his presence. What would you change? Change it. Just do. If there's pornography in your home, get it out. You wouldn't want the Lord to show up to your house and you got that in your house. Come on. Some of your romance novels, women, they're pornography. Get them out of your house. So, you know, whatever. Come on. Get it. You see, you could really look in every drawer in my house and every cupboard in my house and I have nothing, I have nothing that I would be ashamed of in my home. I just don't. Why? Because I decided that's just the way I'm going to live. But before I could really make that decision, do you know, I, had, I spent time fasting and praying about that because there was things in my life that weren't glorifying God. You know, when you make that decision, you do it and then you grow in the Lord and he's going, oh, you know what? I also don't like this. I was like, doggone, I mean, I thought I had it all together. <laughs> Why do I say that? This is a journey. And you're going to be on this journey for the rest of your life. And the grace of God covers all your mess if your heart is seeking him. And your heart just needs to be seeking him. I can guarantee you this. I'll promise you this. I'm going to be closer to the Lord a year from now than I am right now. Guarantee it. Why? Because I'm pressing. I will guarantee you this. I'm going to blow it this year <laughs> before I get closer to the Lord. There will be something in my life. There'll be something that he's going to talk to me about. There's going to be something that he's going to correct me about. There's going to be things where I'm going to have to go, you know what? I am so sorry. Why? Because I, if I have flesh. And the reason why we fast is so that we're not dominated by the flesh, anger, you know, all these things, all the things that are opposite of love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, anything that's against those, come on, how many you know you and I are going to be subject to those things? And when we find ourselves heavily subject to those things, it's a good time to fast and concentrate on the fruit of the Spirit and live from there. Amen? Amen. Next week, we're going to go, I think next week, I forgot what that calendar looks like, Isaiah 58. You are going to love Isaiah 58. Isaiah 58 will make your fast great. That's how I memorized it. Isaiah 58 makes fast great. Okay, kind of rhymes. All right. Somebody should write a song about that. All right. Where's Joel? Is he here today? <laughs> He's kind of quick at writing songs. Anyway. All right. Did that help you today? 
All right. Ten of you. Awesome. The rest of you, thanks for hanging out anyway. I love it. <laughs> Father, thank you for this time together, and we appreciate it. And, and Lord, by faith, we want to live by faith so that your grace is manifest and that you get the glory. We want to live by faith so that by grace we can overcome all things. We want to live by faith so that your grace can change our world that we live in. And it just takes us living by faith, which means being dominated by the Spirit, your Word, and we just embrace this. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed, if you hear and you say, Pastor Paul, I do not know that I was born again. I don't know if today I die, I go to heaven, but I want to know. And you want me to pray with you. You watching online on Facebook there, if you want to know that Jesus Christ is Lord of your life, that if you died today, every sin is gone, forgiven. I want you to raise your hand in this room right now. If you're watching online, just raise your hand anywhere, in your living room or wherever you're at. I want you to just raise your hand. Thank you. Anybody in this room just say, Pastor, pray with me. Yeah, okay. Let's all pray this out loud. Say, dear God, I believe Jesus is your son. I believe he died on the cross because I sinned and I need to be forgiven. I recognize that it comes through Jesus Christ and I want to be forgiven. You said in your word, if I would call Jesus Lord, I would be saved. So Jesus, you're now the Lord of my life. I choose to live for you. Thank you for receiving me. Thank you for forgiving me. And I ask that you fill me with your spirit so I can live this life. Amen. Now, if you prayed that for the first time, you just text got saved to 41411 and you'll receive a uh, email. Uh, you will receive a response so that you can get information that will take you on a five, six, seven day Bible study and uh, that just help you to get started on your journey and give you instructions on what to do after that. So thank you very much for watching online. Thank you so much for being here. If you need prayer for anything, come on up. We're here ready to pray with you. Amen. Thank you so much. Be blessed. Bye-bye.